Hey guys, so I didn't own a Game Genie growing up, but I remember hearing about it as a kid during the Super Nintendo days. Lately I've seen the topic come up more than once in my live streams, so I figured it was time that I finally experiment with one. And going with the NES Game Genie seems like a good place to start. So let's take a look at some fun and silly Game Genie codes for NES games. Batman is one of my favorite games of all time, so I had to check out codes for this one first. Here are two codes that I think are worth checking out if you've played this game a bunch and now you just kind of want to mess around. When entering this code, Batman jumps and just keeps going up. And up. This makes it a fun way to explore parts of the game that you otherwise would never see. I mean, there really isn't much to check out, but there is a sense of satisfaction seeing Batman jump over enemies and just simply go where he shouldn't. This does break the game though, so you'll find yourself walking on air or underneath the bottom of the game. It's good times. Secondly, if you're a fan of Batman's look from the animated series, you'll like this code as it changes you from purple to gray with black and purple shadowing. Ooh. Next up, we have Contra codes! There are a lot of fun ones for this game, but I narrowed it down to just a few that I think are worth mentioning. Want to see what it looks like to shoot yourself out of your own weapon? Well, enter this code and have a field day. Die once and then shoot your weapon and see a bunch of sprites in the jump pose hurling at the screen. It actually works pretty well with destroying a lot of enemies at once, plus it's just funny to see. But keep in mind that if you want to try and get through multiple levels like this, you'll lose the ability if you grab another weapon power-up. So you don't have a lot of time on your hands, but you still want to beat Contra? Enter this code in each stage to take you less than 10 seconds to complete before sending you on to the next one. Seriously, if you just play the beginning of each stage, that's totally good enough and it will send you to the next one. Now if you really want to torture yourself, try out this code and see how far you can make it. This causes everything to look super distorted, but you can somehow still manage to know what you're doing if you're familiar enough with the game. The music is also messed up and appropriately ear-piercing, so make sure your volume isn't up too loud. Next up, we have a fun code for Zelda 2: The Adventure of Link. Enter this code and it allows Link to walk over mountains and water in the overworld. It's fun because you can explore areas of the map that you wouldn't be able to get to otherwise, and eventually things just start getting really weird. In some parts, even if you press down, it still sends you up into the mountains as towns start to change color and you get totally lost. It is possible to find your way back to normalcy at some point, but it isn't easy. Also, there is another code that is very similar to this in Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Same sort of thing, you can walk into areas of the map you normally can't. You can skip the whole inside section of the dam and just walk to the water. So this code can get you to skip entire areas, which some people might enjoy. Another silly Zelda 2 code is this one that allows you to fly. It's stupid, but there's just something funny about seeing Link literally bounce out of the town. Next we have codes for Bubble Bobble. Do you love Bubble Bobble but wish it was more chaotic? Then check this out! Enter this code and watch the enemies go absolutely insane. It's still fairly manageable until you get to level 4. And then if you pair it with the turbo shoes, you're in for some shenanigans. And finally, as expected, Super Mario Bros. has a ton of Game Genie codes. I could probably do a video just on codes for this game, but I just picked out a few that I thought were the most silly. I first noticed that there were a lot of codes that add elements from later levels to level 1. These are simple changes, but I think they're worth messing around with. If you enter this code, cheap cheeps are added to stage 1-1 and it's exactly what you'd imagine. I wish this code allowed them to be placed in all of the stages, at least through the second level. How cool would it be to have cheap cheeps in the underground levels? But it's still fun to dodge them and hit them with fireballs here and there because it just feels wrong. And just like with the cheap cheeps, this code is also a very simple hack, but it's cool to see bullet bills coming at you in the very beginning of the game. And this code adds Bowser's fireballs to the stage, and I gotta admit that although it doesn't really change the gameplay much, it is cool to see his fireballs outside of the castle. This code probably alters the gameplay of level 1 the most by adding Lakitu to the stage. First, he starts out just rolling around on the ground, which is a bit strange to see. In order to get him up and flying around like he's supposed to, you gotta kill him first. 
Even though I've always thought Lakitu was a pretty cute little enemy, when he starts chucking spinies, I instantly start to hate him. So if you want to make level 1 slightly annoying, try this. Now how could you make a Goomba look threatening, you ask? Well, how about just give him the abilities of a hammer bro? This code gives Goombas hammers to chuck at you and it actually makes them almost impossible to kill. They look pretty funny when they get ready to throw their hammers. They're all squishy. And some even float upside down throwing hammers. Possessed Goombas. If you think Mario ate too many meatballs for dinner, why don't you have him work it off a little by entering this code? This game makes the level super stretched out. Like, really. It will take you forever to get to the end of each level. Poor little Mario just has to keep going and going and going. Like when you jump off the final stretch of stairs, you won't be able to jump on the flagpole. Nope, you'll have to walk another few Mario miles to get there. Brutal. What's really funny is the start of stage one too. Waiting for him to enter the pipe is almost infuriating. And there's nothing you can do about it but sit there and wait. Once you finally make it into the pipe, there's floating platforms where there shouldn't be and everything just seems like an alternate reality. I was only able to make it to stage 3 though because the code eventually just breaks the game since the platforms you need to jump on are not where they're supposed to be. So you're just left having to jump to your death or, you know, just run out the clock. This code makes every level an underwater level! I know, I know, underwater levels aren't usually people's favorite part of a Mario game, or any game really, but being able to swim in the sky or float underground is actually pretty fun. Instead of jumping, Mario floats through the air making it a slightly new way to play the game. I think it's worth trying out if you're bored. And this code makes all of the bricks turn into happy little clouds. Why? Well why not? Not much to say about this except that it's cute. It even adds them to the underground levels. But because the bricks are now clouds, you can't break them, which does kind of suck. This is basically something you mess around with for a minute or two and then move on. So I hope you take the time to try out some of those Game Genie codes. If you have any that you think I should try out, please let me know in the comments and thank you so much for watching. Bye!